So one day in the recent past, I was happily minding my own business, you know, opening packs and shit, when all of a sudden, I noticed that I had unpacked a second Gorhal. And I took this as a sign from the gods of random numbers, that it is my ordained destiny to inject a bit of manliness back into the Hearthstone meta. So, time to resurrect the Manly P-Mix deck. Now, as you might be aware, there have been a couple of warrior weapons released in recent months. Uh, first of all, let's talk about King's Defender, which is a bit of a cop-out as far as weapons go, if you ask me, because it incentivizes playing Taunt, and Taunt is about as unmanly as one could possibly imagine, because you've got something sitting on the field distracting your opponent from hitting your face. It's like flagrant cowardice, if you ask me. But it's a weapon, so it's going to have to go in the deck. By the opposite token, however, we have Cursed Blade, which is possibly the manliest thing I have ever laid eyes upon. I mean, not only is there a fair amount of raid in the card art, and that's always got to count for something, but also it increases the amount of face damage you take when you hit things with your face. So obviously, the idea here is that it's one mana, and it's got sort of comparable stats to some fucking paladin weapon or something that I don't remember its name, but it costs less because of the detriment. Well, I tell you, I would play this card if it were three mana. That's how good this effect is in my book. And two mana, three durability is not amazing, but the fact is that this card is so madly, it's like instead of hitting something with your face, it's like strapping dynamite to your face and then hitting it with that. So that definitely needs to go in the deck. First of all, however, we need to get rid of some unnecessary fluff, like Corcron Elites. Yeah, yeah, it's an alright card, fair amount of redness going on there, charge, but it's not really sufficiently a weapon in order to be in this deck as much as I would like, so I'm going to have to take those out. Also, Mortal Strike. I mentioned before that it has a massive amount of redness in the card art, and that's definitely something I can get behind, but Mortal Strike is a spell that deals damage. Unlike Heroic Strike, wherein your face is actually the thing that's doing the damage, this is your face getting something else to do damage that can't take damage itself. And doing damage without taking damage in return in some way is a complete cop-out in my book, so we can get rid of that. Then, Charge. Charge is a good card. Lots of red, very manly. I've mentioned this before. But unfortunately, manliness is sometimes about making tough decisions and difficult trade-offs. So in the interests of maximizing and optimizing manliness, we're going to have to get rid of the charges. So off you go. You can go Curse Blades, King's Defenders, and Gorhaul 2.0. You might be saying to yourself, well, I've never seen a deck with two Gorhauls in it. That doesn't seem very viable. Well, let me remind you that 98% of the Hearthstone community uh, is compromised of net decking mongoloids who do not have sufficient will and inspiration to create something truly magnificent. So, that's all I have to say on the matter. On to battle. Now, there's one more thing we need before we can really get the show started, and that's a bit of background music. Last time I had bagpipes, which are unequivocally manly, in order to give myself immense inspiration. This time I think I found something even better. It might potentially be the most manly piece of music that exists on the planet. It is the theme song from that Beowulf movie that came out a couple years ago and it's phenomenal. Here we go. Once again, into ranked mode because only fucking casuals play casual. Don't ever play casual unless you're a fucking casual. It also seems that my computer is performing at a higher level than previously. Well, so I thought. Don't worry, just a little bit of lag to keep me on my toes. But I assure you that my internet is up to scratch. I have a sufficient amount of hard drive space. So if all of the stars are aligned for some poor, innocent, net-decking tryhard who has thought to himself, I'm going to get onto ladder today, hmm, maybe score some stars or something like that, or maybe January is the month I'm going to grind up to legend. Well, sorry. Fucking, I don't understand how to pronounce any of those characters. Why do you put accents? Why, why would a Z have an accent on it? I don't even know. But this, okay, perfect hand right here, right? So obviously, 
30 cards in the Hearthstone deck. This deck, we're probably going to win around turn 9 or so. So we definitely, that's like a 1 in 3 chance of having, of drawing Dromash organically. So we definitely want to keep him in our opening hand to ensure that we have him when we need him. Right? In addition to that, we definitely want both inner rages so that we can ping this guy's knife juggler on turn 2 for 0 mana. That's definitely going to make him cry his foreign tears out. Instant first draw Ogre Warmore is definitely an indication from the gods that destiny is on our side. Let's see what Roswell, I'm going to call him Roswell for the sake of convenience, is going to do on his turn. Maybe he's AFK. Uh, I'm definitely not one to complain about getting free rewards, free wins, because my opponent is AFK. Like, I'm a shrewd businessman, or so I tell myself, so that's definitely a positive in my book. Right? So we, can, we have two choices, three choices before us. We can either end turn straight away, we can armor up, or we can use heroic strike and hit him in the face. No point in even trying to guess which of those three would cause Reykjavik to have the most brown liquid leaking down his asshole. <coughs> Let's see how, response, how he responds to our cunning maneuver. The answer is that it doesn't matter how he responds, because either way we're going to play Ogre Warm on this turn, and it's going to lead us into victory. You see, what did I tell you about the value of Inner Rage? Zero mana trades directly with a three mana with a three mana Wolf Rider. Infinite value. Have you ever seen? It's like a card that kills a creature, like Assassinate or something like that. If it costs zero mana, so it's effectively infinity damage because it kills it instantly and it's even more than that it's two times infinity damage or it's it's one damage then infinity damage because if it were a divine shield minion then assassinate would kill that too so we just cast an infinity damage spell for zero mana and you have never seen value like that before obvious choice here prioritize weapons Ogre Mal more walking out perfectly for us unfortunately we haven't had the opportunity for it to do some sick maths because Rake John hasn't played any minions except for that one that we murdered with a perfectly timed inner rage. So pretty straightforward game here. Now the question is do we keep the charge on the king's defender in order to maximize value from that perspective or do we go right ahead and play the Arknight Reaper? Well the answer to that question is that more is always better. Bigger weapons, bigger attack are going to be all the more terrifying to Roskowitz over there. Now here we find ourselves with an interesting conundrum because we could kill this with inner rage for infinity damage at zero mana, maximum infinite value, or we could save it to combo with Gromash Hellscream. Luckily however we drew the death bite so choice is no longer relevant. Play the Death Rattle, play the Death Bite, because even though it uses up the Arcanite Reaper, the point is that we have demonstrated to Roskowitz the sheer amount of face aggression that exists in this deck. And that's obviously going to increase the amount of boot quaking inherent in his lifestyle today. All we need to do is survive one more turn and then the term easy game, easy life will be appropriate. Now, despite what I said earlier about getting out as much face damage as humanly possible, demonstrated to our opponent, the fact is that, of course, you know I'm going to do it. <laughs> you thought I was going to make a wise decision? Nope, not today. Because, you know, this gives us lethal on the board either way next turn. And it shows this fellow that we simply do not give a fuck about our own welfare. And as I've mentioned previously, PsyOps is by far the most important factor in Hearthstone. He got Misha, lucky RNG, on his Hunter Bullshit overpowered 3 mana card. Fortunately for us, however, we have the hard counter to taunt, which is all face all the time, called Gromash Hellscream. Now I know what you're thinking to yourself, if I hadn't overridden the Death Spite 
with the fiery war axe, I would have won. Except I wouldn't really have won because I would have killed myself on the Misha. But to be honest, in the grand scheme of things, that's a pretty manly way to go, if you ask me. Now, clearly a wise man, you know, he's obviously realized that he has somehow managed to win this game and is so grateful for having survived a scrape of death that is trying to PM, which is adorable but is not making any impressive suggestions about the size of his penis. Nonetheless, however, he's definitely going to have nightmares tonight. He has a substantial brown stain down the back of his underpants, and he's probably going to begin contemplating suicide upon, after further reflection, realizing how unmanly his deck is, simply running a face hunter of some kind. Uh, so hopefully his life has been ruined. But let's see if we can find someone else to do the same. So I consider that game a moral victory. We might not have won per se if you consider the rules of Hearthstone imposed by Blizzard to be the definition of winning. But to be honest, I get the feeling that Blizzard doesn't know what they're doing. Why is Dr. Boom so prevalent in the meta still after a year and a half if Blizzard has any idea what they're doing? So because of that, I definitely do not subscribe to their authority in deciding what winning means. So instead, I'm going to declare that Ray Kajan having a terrible, terrible day is a sufficient criteria to call it a victory. This seems like a pretty good hand. Upgrade we can use to attack three times with the Ogre War Mall instead of two, which is obviously ridiculously overpowered because Ogre War Mall is just so strong by itself. Oh, good golly, an Undertaker. I haven't seen that since 2013. It's like a trip down memory lane. It's fine though, we have an entire handful of hard counters to that. The other important thing from the opening hand was the Youthful Brewmaster, because you never know when we might get the combo off. And as per usual, allowing the Ogre Warmore to carry us through. So clearly, we did attack the correct minion, otherwise the Ogre Mormor would have let us know in no uncertain terms to attack something else. We even have a second one to upgrade on the next turn, just to show off our immense penis size. Well, that's an interesting card choice. I wonder if Angel in Tears decided to put that in the, his deck of his own accord. You know, the rather non-standard Sorcerer's Apprentice in Mage. It's not like I've seen that somewhere before. Well, let's get ourselves an extra swing on this bad boy. Going full ham. Once again, making the correct choice. And no point playing the Youthful Brewmaster for tempo or any nonsense like that. I wouldn't want to armor up because, you know, that just demonstrates that I'm some kind of sissy. You know, armor is for sissies, this is all about face damage. I suppose if I'd armored up more readily in the previous game, I might have won, but it would have been a Pyrrhic victory, if you ask me. Maybe it's a duplicate. Ah, yes, yeah, so obviously it doesn't matter what the secret is, because the only one that counteracts weapons is Ice Barrier. And it's not that as clearly demonstrated by the wisdom of the Overwall. So, we definitely don't have to worry about the secret. It might be some kind of mirror entity, but if the ca that is the case, then all he's going to get is a Doomsayer when I pull off the combo. Ah, Freeze, my ancient enemy. As you can imagine, there are precisely two counters to an all taunt deck. One of them is Freeze, I mean an all-weapon deck, one of them is Freeze, and the other one is Taunt, as spoiled by my verbular misslip just there. So we have a contingency plan, however, we equip the Death Bite, thus activating the Death Bite Death Rattle, allowing us to use the infinite value as a ping to get rid of the threatening sissy card net deck nonsense bullshit. And we are now unfrozen and about to make a great big steaming pile of horse shit on Angel in Tears' face. Is your body? Because mine sure is not. 
when I say, is your body, of course what I mean is, is your body ready? I was simply in too much of a hurry to verbositize the entire sentence. I could armor up at this point, but honestly, that would be giving in, if you ask me. Chances are he has a fireball, in which case we, in inverted commas, lose the game if you subscribe to Blizzard's fascist rule system. But once again, we have demonstrated an unequivocal manly superiority throughout the course of this game. Now, once again, we are saved by the random number guards. Because I can simply destroy this thing and increase the cost of the Dread Corsair so as for further psychological damagement. And of course, you know, being considerate, I wouldn't want it to be too easy for me to win and just let my opponent lose, you know, because that would be rude. So I decided to give him a taunt instead, just to show that I want, I'm as sportsmanlike as conceivable. Have a bunch of extra mana, might as well use that on something. So unbelievably the taunt synergy actually works because there is a sufficiently manly taunt card that exists in Hearthstone. So it turns out King's Defender is not as much as a cop out of a cop out as I initially assumed. Doesn't matter however, because although we've now, if you will, lost two games in a row, the fact is that two Hearthstone players have witnessed a once in a lifetime event of being introduced to the new incoming manly meta. So it is only a matter of time until change is unavoidable.